All right, so today I'm going to show you how to do some pretty simple repairs and recalibration on a classic Nikon camera. Right here I have an S3, the same shutter calibration I'm going to show you. It will work on the S3, the S4, the SP, and the Nikon F, because they all have essentially the same internal workings and a similar overall build. Uh, so for this repair, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need the camera itself. Uh, you're going to need some precision screwdrivers. I think uh, technically you need one of the 2 millimeter head to take off the, internal, the screws on the bottom plate. And then a smaller glasses screwdriver usually works for some of the internal mechanisms you're going to have to sort of affect. Uh, I usually like to have just a microfiber cloth just to kind of put stuff on and keep it safe, try to keep stuff from getting too scratched up. And lastly, and perhaps most surprisingly, you'll need an old CRT TV. And for those of you who don't know, the CRTs are the thick ones that just go way back and they have the, the cathode ray tubes in them. But we will need one of these in working order to actually see the shutter, and I'll get to that in a little bit. <clears throat> But to start off with, we've got a camera. Like I said, I've got this old S3 right here. I bought this one, you can't hardly see it because of the lighting, but I bought this one very cheap off eBay knowing it was uh, going to have some problems, but I was able to actually fix it, and it works very well. The rangefinder patch is a little dim, but aside from that, uh, it works almost perfectly, and I've used it quite a bit over the last two years or so, and I really like it. It's um, one of my favorite cameras. I take it with me a lot. Uh, <clears throat> so first, you'll just need to take off the lens. Take off the bottom plate. All right. And when you do that, you should see the shutter. You can see the shutter does work, traverses, and you can kind of see a little glint of light. Uh, but that doesn't really give us a good idea of what the shutter speeds are, and that's what we're trying to do right now is find accurate shutter speeds, because as these cameras sit over time, the shutter speeds tend to, uh, like, it seems like the, the leading shutter, the springs seem to tighten up and they, they move a little too fast. You'll get a, a black bar on the, uh, the far left of your exposure, and then you'll kind of see a dark gradient going up to it. So it just gives you a really unappealing, uneven exposure. Uh, it, but it's pretty easy to fix that. You'll notice very, very quickly in the photos, uh, and I'll show you a way to kind of see it with the CRT TV in a moment. And as you can tell, the bottom plate's already a little loose. I kind of loosen that up just to save a little bit of time. But there are four screws. This is where you probably want to use your precision screwdriver, and I believe you want one with a two millimeter head. I've already loosened this one, so I'm just going to use the same uh, little glasses screwdriver here, just to save a little bit of time. Uh, now, one thing I would suggest is a lot of people like to just take and uh, uh, take their little screws and uh, try to keep them in the hole and just move parts with the screws in the holes, and I, I do that a lot myself. But it is pretty easy to drop screws and lose them, so I would actually suggest getting a little magnet and just having a magnet and kind of sticking all your screws to it. Obviously, I'm, I'm not doing that right now, but that is a good practice. All right, so right now I took off the internal bottom plate of the camera. Let's see if I can get a little more light in here. Is that better? Ah, come on. All right. Okay, so right now... You can see there's a lot of little mechanisms. Uh, you don't really want to touch any of them, to be honest. The only ones we're going to work with are these two here. So this one uh, controls this rear shutter, which I believe is called the following shutter. And this one controls the forward shutter, which is called uh, the leading shutter. And the one you're almost always going to have problems with is this leading one, because as you take the camera, I think it's mainly when they're left cocked for long periods of time, it just messes up the springs in there, and it over-tensions them, and they just get a little too, a little overzealous in what they do. So now that we have that and we see these, um, one thing you'll want to know is that usually these two little screws right here, here and here, those are usually uh, sealed in with some sort of lacquer. So you might want to take and rub a little bit of isopropic alcohol on it, let it sit for a while, then clean it off. You just want to put a tiny dab. You don't want to like drown them in it. And you might do that a couple of times. And when you go in with this little glasses screwdriver, uh, you'll want to hold it pretty heartily and just twist it, and it should break away the rest of the lacquer. Um, Arguably not the best practice, I know, but uh, from what I've seen, most of these cameras are old enough, the lacquer is pretty deteriorated, so you might want to just kind of carefully but firmly give it a little twist without adding the alcohol, and that might be enough to break away the lacquer. But once you do that, make sure you kind of chip away any lacquer that's there and clean it out of the camera. You don't want that floating around in your camera, because that'll just mess stuff up even more. Because you notice there are some little arms and a spring right there that could very easily uh, be affected by having some ancient piece of dried lacquer in them. So what we're going to do right now is we have the camera open. We know essentially where we're going to repair. Uh, we need to figure out what the shutter speeds are. And sadly, this is one of those things that I, I know is not going to show up on camera. 
Uh, but I'll put a little graphic on screen to kind of show you what's happening. So what you'd want to do is turn on, turn on this old CRT. Can you see it? Let's see. All right, they take a second to warm up. You'll see there's the static. It's not really going to pick anything up nowadays because everything's gone over to digital receivers. But what you'll want to do is hold the camera uh, in between your eyes, or in this case, the camera, and the screen. It's very tempting to get right up on top of the screen, a few inches away from it, but for some reason that doesn't seem to work as well. You want to hold it back uh, over a foot away, maybe two feet away, and you'll notice you kind of see it a little bit there. Uh, it's actually showing up better than I would have thought. But if you look at the screen through the shutter, you'll see you just get sort of a flash of light. And I don't know how well it's coming across right now. But um, with the naked eye, you see sort of a diagonal line. And that diagonal line, uh, turn that off. That diagonal line should give you t two things. It should be very even, and it should show you, judging on its width, you should be able to figure out roughly what your shutter speed is and how accurate it is. This is not a super exact science, it's kind of an art, but you can get a pretty good idea of how accurate your shutter is from that. Another thing you'll notice is if the line is not even, if the two bar, yeah, if the two bars from the, um, the different shutters are not perpendicular, uh, usually you'll see that one is, yeah, they're kind of wider at the top or wider at the bottom and you get kind of an uneven funnel type shape. Uh, and if that's the case, then that means the shutters are not moving at the same speed, which is usually the big problem you're going to find. And usually it's, and it's almost always because this forward shutter is moving too fast. And I believe when that happens, you have sort of a, a funnel that is narrow at the top and it widens some at the bottom. Uh, so when you see that, what you'll want to do is you'll want to take a little precision screwdriver. You'll want to get into that little screw right there. And you'll want to twist it just a little bit. Let me get this light back on so you can see it better. Okay, nice and blue. Uh, but you'll want to get your screwdriver right here into that tiny little screw. Now this is not like a proper screw, it's one of those, um, I think it's called a worm screw or something where it doesn't have uh, any sort of cap at the end. So you'll want to get in there and you'll want to twist this about one, may maybe not even one, about three quarters of a twist to just kind of loosen it up. And from there you'll see there is another screw at this end right here right there and you'll want to get in there and you'll want to loosen this one you never really want to tighten it because remember the problem is almost always that this shutter is too tight so if you tighten it too much you're going to again over tension the springs and you could potentially break them if you go too far so you're going to want to turn it backwards or to your left um, and when you do that it should loosen up the the springs in here uh, again, this is one of those things where you'll probably want to do it very slowly. You'll probably just want to turn it about a quarter turn to a half turn at a time. And after you've done that, you'll want to go back to your CRT, flip it on, test it, make sure that the, um, try to make sure that the speeds are relatively accurate. Try to make sure you're getting it more and more even. And again, this is one of those things where uh, it sounds very abstract as I describe it. But when you're actually sitting here doing it, it's it's pretty obvious, strangely enough, and it's it's pretty easy to get it close because. Uh, a thing you have to remember with these cameras is the shutter speeds were never 100% accurate. They were probably only about 97% accurate when they were brand new and like perfectly calibrated. And most of the, this, so these Nikons right here are all 60 years old. So over that time, most of them have degraded well beyond that. So even the accurate ones are probably only about 90, 92 to 95% accurate. And you're not really going to notice any serious problems until the, the accuracy drops down to like probably the, the low 80% level or 70% level. So as long as you get it pretty accurate, as long as your bars uh, are kind of even when you see the shutter traverse, you'll get an even exposure. And sometimes your exposure will probably be a little bit too fast, uh, maybe occasionally too slow, but usually it'll be a little too fast. But the interesting thing is you won't really notice much of a difference. Um, I know that sounds kind of strange, but when you're developing the film, you, you generally won't really notice a difference because, I mean, the difference would be something like 125 to uh, maybe... 140 or 150 shutter speed if it was moving too fast as you go up it usually gets a little bit more dramatic so at the 1000 level it could be somewhere in the range of maybe 1500 or something like that um, and that's usually the big issue normally the shutter speeds are going to be an issue when you get to the fast speeds like 1000th of a second maybe 500th of a second but when you get down to 100 125th of a second they're pretty much always fine and good to go and when you get below that um, I forget if it starts at 60 or 30. I think it's 30 and below 
all that is actually controlled by the slow governor, which is a different mechanism in the camera that's more a clockwork mechanism. So if that's your issue with these slower shutter speeds, then this whole repair I'm showing you right now is irrelevant. You're not even going to want to try and do this because you're, you're probably more likely to just damage the camera than to actually repair it in any way. So hopefully, I know I didn't go into a ton of detail, but I'm, I'm trying not to get too caught up in the weeds, but hopefully that right there is enough information for somebody with an old Nikon camera uh, that's having kind of a inaccurate shutter speeds to open it up and make the shutter speeds at least more even if not completely accurate and overall even making them more even should make them a lot more accurate uh, usually the way these are calibrated like I said the, this rear shutter usually stays very accurate it's just the forward one that gives you the issues um, so anyways once you've made your adjustment you're satisfied with it you'll want to take that screw you'll want to kind of tighten it back up right there and then you will want to put the bottom plate back on and once you've done that, um, the camera should be pretty good. If you do the do the repair properly, it should last for quite a while. Um, another thing to make sure the repair sticks, whenever you store the camera, do not store it with the shutter cocked like it is right now. Always let that shutter um, go back to the, uh, the storage position. Uh, even supposedly from what I've heard, I'm not sure how true this is, cocking the shutter when you're just out and about and leaving it cocked like that for an hour if you do that repeatedly, supposedly that can actually mess up the shutter speeds. So I would always say, wait to cock your shutter until you're about to take a photo, and then just kind of leave it like that. And when you see something else, get ready to take another photo. Don't leave it cocked. I know that's very tempting, and I know with certain cameras they actually tell you to leave it cocked. But with these old Nikons, um, you really need to leave them in the, the sort of uncocked position. So... Um, Again, I just kind of rambled on there for a while, but hopefully this video will give somebody enough information that they can just kind of start working on an old Nikon and hopefully make some repairs. If you break it, well, don't blame me. I, I told you not to mess with that stuff. So, anyways, hopefully that helps you.